Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this rubber text that looks like Jello using Element 3D. And currently, Element 3D doesn't do this. So, check out this tutorial on how I did it. So, this is a very unique, kind of a cool Jello style. And since this is not going to be an Element 3D tutorial, it's going to be how to create this tutorial just to keep things nice and quick and tight. So I'm not going to show you how I created the text. If you don't know, it's really easy. Just go check out any Element 3D tutorial out there and you can kind of see how um, that's created. But so right now I have just some text rotating and this is a normal rotate without the jello-ness applied to it. And so you will want to start with something about like this. And see how it's rotating just forward and back, forward and back. Now let's add the effects to it to make it all jello-y. And what I did with that is it's called time displacement. And time displacement is a very unique effect. And let me just bring it on here with a new adjustment layer. Let's go to effect, time, time displacement. And then also I'm gonna go to effect, time, force motion blur because we're going to use the force motion blur for the motion blur instead of the built-in motion blur. Right now it's looking kind of crazy because I don't have this time displacement layer created. So let's go ahead and just turn off that adjustment layer and quickly create one. So let's add a new solid. Click OK. Just bring this down to the bottom and I'm going to go to layer, layer styles and let's add a gradient overlay. And we want this gradient overlay to be at zero degrees. So it's white on this side, black on that side. And then before we go any further, we need to pre-compose this. Call it time layer, throw it down at the bottom. Again, it just it doesn't need to be there uh, for the plugin to be able to see it. So now let's go into this time displacement layer and let's grab that layer. Let's turn this back on and now you can see things are starting to happen. Still not exactly what we want. And what time displacement is doing is it's taking a section at a time based on this layer here. So if I come in here and let's bring this in, it's basing it on this gradient. So right now things are set at one second apart and it's going one second apart and doing just a slice at a time running across this gradient. And this resolution, or here it says time resolution, frames per second, is set at 60. Um, but what we want is we want a higher resolution so we don't see these little jaggy blockies. And to do that, um, the, I've got this composition set at 1280 width by 720 height. And since I'm going width, I'm going to set this resolution to 1280. And this is actually going to take up a lot of rendering power. Now next thing I want to do is I want to change this max displacement time. On something like this, the bigger the time, the higher the number, the tighter it is. It's going to be from like here to right there is all that you're going to see. So I want to have this a lower number, so let's go 0.2. Let's go right in the middle of our transition to see how this looks. That's looking pretty good. That's about how I want it. So let's take a quick render through this, see what it looks like. I've got this on low resolution just so we can see how see it a lot faster because this does take quite a bit of processing power in order to do this. But it's such a unique look that you can't get without using this or unless you go into a 3D program like Cinema 4D. So there it is, just kind of preview text. Now let's go in and let's preview this with the motion blur. So I come in here in the force motion blur. And there's not a whole lot of difference. I just have noticed that I like the way that it blurs better when I use the force motion blur versus the other. Because the other is it's kind of changing it over time. Um, and it's not based on how much this is actually moving. It's based on if it was moving like this. You know, where everything's all together in one go. 
instead of let's turn this back on instead of where this is running faster than this is. So the force motion blur is a little bit more accurate as far as how it should be looking, but there's not a whole lot of difference. So let's do some other types of rubber text with this. Because this is cool, but this is only one way to do it. Now if we want to, say, rotate this a different way. So let's, I'm going to turn off this adjustment layer just so and I'm back here. Let's go to my element. And let's rotate this a different way. Let's rotate around the z-axis. So I, I keyframed it. 180 degrees. And now we're rotating this way. Now the problem with this is if I were to turn on this adjustment layer, let's go right in the middle of this, and you can see what's going to happen. I'm going to turn off the motion blur for now. You can see this is not quite working how we want it to work. So what we want to do is we want to change the type of gradient. So at this point, right before it starts, I'm going to double click on my time layer. And this is my gradient, so I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to cut it so it changes here. And let's change this to a radial. Let's go back into our comp. And that's starting to be better, but it's you can see that it's not exactly what we want. So let's come in to the adjustment layer. And this is where we're going to want to change this here, this displacement. It's set at 0.2. So let's go 0 0.05. That's better. It's kind of more like what we want. So there's a radial for spinning this way. Now if I want to spin kind of front to back, let me go ahead and I'm going to just take this off. And let's spin around the Y rotation. So right now that's on a radial, which is what we don't want. So let's come in here, let's turn this one off. And let's see what it looks like if we have the gradient going up and down like this. kind of cool. You can see a little bit of a rubberness to it. Another thing we can do is let's turn this radial that we had, see how we had two of them here, and let's go back to a linear and then but let's change the angle to 90 degrees. And what this is going to do is it's going to go now horizontal instead of vertical. Another way of doing a rubber text. So I hope that you learned some cool stuff here. Really the main thing that's doing this is the time displacement. So check out time displacement. Let's take a look at this. Um, remember you want this max displacement time to be pretty low. I've got mine set at 0 0.05 or 0 0.2 depending on, on which one I was doing. The resolution, you're going to want to have the same width as what you have here. Sometimes you might need to even do it a little bit you know, bigger than that. But the higher your resolution, the longer it's going to take to render out. And I prefer using the forced motion blur. I think it's just a little bit more accurate as far as how the movement is projected. And so that's how to create rubber text with Element 3D using the time displacement effect. If you have any questions, go ahead, put them down in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing to my channel. I put out new videos every Friday and this is one of them. So go check out some of the other videos I have. There's over 100 videos. You can look at different tutorials on different things. I like to do motion graphics and After Effects tutorials. So please go check out the channel, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.